Thank you so much for tuning into our weather classroom. As today's subject, well, we have a production footnote on that. We were supposed to be covering the clouds in our segment for today. However, since we've had such record-breaking cold, we decided to focus on that for today and talk about the historical cold wave that has gripped much of the eastern one-half to one-third uh, of the country and what impact it has made. We'll talk also about the wind chill and what brutal effects it can have, as well as you'll be focusing a little bit later on about lake effect snows and what an impact it has had over the last week to 10 days with that cold air racing out of the Canadian Prairie provinces and settling in across the Great Lakes and dumping them with a lot of snow. But by far, you are living through history. In fact, never have we seen uh, temperatures this cold in this century. In fact, many locations across the Great Lakes in the Northeast early on the 19th of January, Wednesday morning, reported temperatures they have never experienced since they've been keeping records. And for many locations, that meant back to about uh, 1860s, 1870s. In fact, many record lows, all time record lows established across this area with temperatures as cold as 22 below in Pittsburgh, 27 below in Indianapolis, and even down to 20 degrees below zero in Cleveland, Ohio. In fact, with Jill, we're gonna find out a few scenes across the country in this cold wave. Snow plows in Fargo, North Dakota have been working such long hours lately that they are actually beginning to break down. Snow plow operators who have been working in extremely cold conditions are also beginning to show signs of suffering. The low in Fargo was 26 below zero this Wednesday morning, but the wind chills is, is as much a problem in Fargo as in many other parts of the country. Yesterday, that would be Tuesday at one time, it was 67 below. Meanwhile, in Chicago, the sixth consecutive day of 10 degrees below zero or colder. That is a record for the Windy City. It looks like the problems continue in and around the airport. In fact, a, a group of men returning to Antarctica were commenting that it was much warmer in the South Pole than it has been in Chicago. So the very cold weather continues to grip not only Fargo, but also Chicago, Illinois, making it tough to even fight fires. A man in Ohio, Vinton County, Ohio, decided to take a walk through the woods to check on a friend of his on Monday night when he stumbled over a log and hurt his hip. He couldn't walk any longer, so he packed together a snow cave to keep it warm, keep himself warm, and that probably saved his life. He was rescued after spending nine hours in the dangerously cold weather. Hal is okay. He does not even have frostbite. We slip to the bluegrass state. In fact, Louisville, Kentucky, still under the grips of tremendous snows they've had earlier in the week and bitter cold temperatures. This makes the third consecutive day in through Wednesday where interstate highways in Kentucky are off limits to vehicles which are carrying anything but essential goods. It looks like things like food, heating fuel, and medical supplies is the only thing you can travel with in the state of Kentucky. Still hard hit. Cold weather has caused a water pipe to break in the suburbs of Atlanta. For hours, water gushed from this pipe down the road and into a local neighborhood. The water carved a gaping hole under the road and turned a nearby rail yard into a lake, later frozen. Residents of Fulton County are asked to conserve water, while water trucks have been brought into the city and to the airport in case of fire. What an impact this cold wave has produced, not only from Fargo, North Dakota, but Chicago and Ohio, as well as Kentucky, and as far south as Atlanta, Georgia. How could we see such a cold wave like this develop? Let's give you the primary ingredients that uh, end up setting up a record cold night over much of the eastern third of the country over the last couple of nights. First of all, one very important ingredient is snow cover. That will help in the radiation process to allow those already chilly temperatures to be re-radiated back out into the atmosphere on a cool night with very little uh, wind to be talking about. That is reflecting what sunlight comes in. So one ingredient that's very important is to have some snow cover and right now we have a great deal of snow cover in around the Great Lakes and as Jill will point out a little bit later on, even especially around the specific area, very close to the Great Lakes. Another very important ingredient is Arctic cold air mass. That has been firmly in place as well. Driven in from Siberia over the North Pole, down through Canada and slid into the Northeast United States to provide some of the coldest temperatures they have ever been reported since they've been keeping record. Add to that a clear night, moonlit, starlit skies, light winds, and all that will make the greatest impact on those temperatures to drive them on down. Snow cover, light winds, that means strong radiational cooling and the cold Arctic air mass still well in place. Speaking of the snow, we had lots of snow to describe for you. Look at many locations, even a little bit of dusting on the ground can re-radiate that sunlight that comes in during the day 
And if you've got cloudy skies, you even wipe out that parameter. But look how the heavy snowpack all the way across the Great Lakes in the Northeast added in that very cold Arctic air spilling southward, providing some of the coldest air we've seen in many years. And as we later found out, those ingredients came together to produce even some brutally, wind uh, br brutally cold wind chill values. Look at the all-time record lows established on Wednesday morning, 22 below in Columbus, as well as Pittsburgh and Louisville with about 16 inches of snow on the ground, even 25 below on up in the central areas of uh, Ohio. In fact, here's the all-time, never been this cold before, record cold temperatures, 22 below in Pittsburgh, 27 below in Indianapolis, and Cleveland, Ohio reporting 20 below as well. In addition, insult to injury is the winds accompanying this, driving the wind chills on down. To find out more about wind chill, here's Lisa Spencer. Wind chill is what makes the weather bone chilling cold. It is caused by wind blowing the warm air molecules away from your body and making you feel colder. The wind chill is even worse when you're wet because the evaporation of moisture takes heat energy away from your body. The wind chill factor is a big concern during the winter months. Winter is the coldest season because the Earth axis is tilted away from the sun in the northern hemisphere. During this season, temperatures are prone to be near freezing at times, accompanied by precipitation and winds. On a cold, windy winter day, the wind chill can be extremely low. On such a day, the stronger the wind blows, the lower the wind chill factor. Protection against the wind and the cold is necessary for health and comfort. Lisa Spencer, The Weather Channel. Most of the eastern United States picked up its big snow on Monday, but some parts of the country continue to pick up snow, and that is mainly due to lake effect. Janetta Jones explains exactly how that works. These storms can bring large amounts of snow, enough at times to bring a whole community to a grinding halt, while just a few miles away the sun can be shining. But what causes lake effect snow? As can be seen here, when cold air passes over the warm water, it causes the atmosphere to become unstable over the lake. In effect, moisture from the lake develops into snow-laden clouds and deposits snow onto the land. Snow squalls can extend well inland as the air is lifted across hilly areas and the moisture is wrung out. A large amount of snow falls on areas surrounding the lake, such as Buffalo, New York. The memorable snow totals have come from lake effect snows. In 1966, a storm dumped 101 inches of snow in Oswego, New York. In 1972, the same city reported 70 inches. And in 1977, Buffalo and Watertown received three to four feet of snow. Janetta Jones, The Weather Channel. All right, let's go over it one more time. When you have cold air going over a relatively warmer water surface, picks up that moisture, and when it gets up to a point of saturation or sometimes over land, then you start to see snow, and sometimes it's heavy snow. That's what they've had in New York. Take a look at the radar. It probably will not look real impressive right through here, but um, what you're looking at now is Cape Hatteras, and what we've had here actually is what we call sound effect, something they don't have very often, but with the very cold air that has come down this time, the cold air has come over Pamlico Sound, picked up that moisture, and in Cape Hatteras, they have had what is similar to lake effect. Can't call it lake effect, however, that would be sound effect. Now let's take you up to New York and show you a radar there. Now here is actual lake effect snow, and it has been going strong. Monday they picked up their first snow batch, then the lake effect kicked in, hours and hours of snow. What looks unimpressive here has actually amounted to about three feet of snow. Thank you so much, Jill, for uh, explaining the lake effect process and actually showing what was going on on a Wednesday afternoon coming off Lake Ontario. The Weather Classroom Special Edition, focusing in on the Arctic cold that blasts across the eastern third, the one half of the country. Again, we'll pick up on our regular scheduled uh, topics for tomorrow. Stay with the Weather Channel as we continue to update you on the Weather Classroom.